Shalom. I'm your brother Jeremiah from the branch, GMS, South Carolina Midlands. Before we start off, all praise, honor, and glory belongs to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Kakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders, the great millstone who teach and rule well, and Shalom unto you, hopeful elect, scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom. I want to touch on in this lesson on how there's power in your prayer, right? And, and here in the times, you know, that we are in, right, in the times to come, you know, it's very, very important that we must pray for one another, okay? You know, um, you know just recently, there's been some weeks now, all right, maybe even a month. Um, <clears throat> you had a brother within the camp, uh, the priest, uh, Ayan Wa, you know, subscribe to his channel, uh, GMS Ayan Wa, all right, you know, he had an incident to where, you know, he burned his hand, all right, but Yahabai Shemal Shai, of course, you know, call uh, law Yahabai Shemal Shai, you know, he had mercy on the priest, all right. And, uh, you know, he's healing, you know, just fine. All right. And, you know, one thing I took from, you know, that is that we need to, we need to selflessly pray for one another. Okay. So, uh, oftentimes, you know, we pray for ourselves, you know, that Yahabah Shema Shai, you know, he'll have mercy you know, upon ourselves, man. Okay, but, and we need that mercy, right? Let's not get that wrong. We need to continue to pray that Yahweh Shemal Shai will have mercy on ourselves, okay, as well as our house, all right? But we need to also selflessly pray for the brothers and the sisters, right? So the sincere believers in Yahweh Shemal Shai. All right, and then this lesson you know, I want to touch on through the scriptures, right through the spirit, that our prayer has power, man. Okay, so when we, you know, make our prayer and our supplication to Yahweh by Shema Shai, not just you no know, vain babbling, right? Just words in which we're just speaking, man. Right, our prayer. Has power in it, man. Okay, I'm gonna show that via the scriptures, right? So this is the definition of pray, of pray, uh, uh, um, the root word of praying or prayer. You know, the root word of pray literally means to ask earnestly, beg someone, right? In this case, you know, we beg or we ask earnestly. Know our power, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Okay, and you know, going down here, it says prayer, request, treaty. Okay, so you know, when we beg, all right, and when we ask earnestly, all right, we make our request, all right, it is unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. All right, and in that request, in that prayer, you know, there's a form of power, man. Okay, and the scriptures tell us so, man. So, let's go ahead and read it. This is the book of James, chapter 5 and verse 16. It says, confess your faults one to another. Yeah, you know, we're supposed to you know, come to, you know, uh, the, the brothers, you know, with our, our sins, man. What is going into, oh, you know, and, and confessing your faults, man. All right, confessing your sins one to another. Okay. And, you know, that's with purpose, man. Okay. You know, the, the council you know, of the brotherhood, you know, will you know, lead you in, in serving the Lord correctly, all right, via the scriptures. Man. All right. You know, the scriptures tell us here in Proverbs 27 and 5, it says, open rebuke, which rebuke goes into correction, man. All right. It's better than secret love. So these brothers, they won't hold their tongue. 
All right? They won't tell you what you want to hear. All right? These brothers will tell you through the spirit what you're supposed to hear, man. Okay? These brothers will correct you by right, via the scriptures, man. Right? On how you should go about on, um, you know, amending that, you know, sin that you're confessing, man. All right? That fault. Okay? So it tells us, you know, to confess our faults one to another. Yeah, because we are a body, man. Okay? And, you know, our whole purpose here, you know, of course, is to, you know, uh, push forth this word, you know, that the elect, all right, may be sealed, man. All right, and you brothers out there, all right, you few sincere sisters, you are a part of the hopeful elect, man. Okay? And it says, pray one for another. Scriptures tell us to pray for one another, man. Okay? And it's not like there's something, you know, that we haven't been doing, man. Okay? So you're supposed to be praying for your brothers. You're supposed to be praying, you know, for your sisters out here. Man. Okay? But we should do it more, man. Okay? And that's one thing I took from, you know, the, the priest, you know, the Kahan, you know, the camp. You know, when, you know, he had, you know, his incident of burning his hand, you know, you know, hey, that, that push, you know, me through the spirit to pray more for brothers, man, right? To pray more for the believers, man, the sisters as well, man, okay? It says, pray one for another that ye may be healed. Yeah, you know, you'll healed, right, you know, from, you know, certain infirmities, right? Certainly uh, certain bodily ailments, okay? You know, also, you know, you'll be uh, uh, healed from that certain sin, man, okay? You know, you will overcome, you know, that certain sin or, or that fault that you're dealing with, okay? That's through the scriptures, man, okay? Through the counsel of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you know, via his men, okay? It says, the effectual, fervent prayer of of a righteous man availeth much, right? This righteous man is dealing with the hopeful elect, man, okay? This doesn't concern the two-thirds of the house of Israel, man, right? Because they are wicked. They are rebellious, man, okay? But the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and we're gonna to touch on that word availeth, right? Much, okay. But you know, just to prove the point, you know that it's not talking about the two thirds. This is Proverbs twenty eight and nine. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, hey, that's the two thirds, man. Okay, you know when the when the prophets, the men of the Lord, right, the mouthpiece of the Lord is out there. Giving them correction, right? Reading them the laws, the statutes, the commandments, right? Telling them about prophecy, right? You know, the two thirds, they turn their ear from hearing it, okay? It says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So that shows you that the Lord, he's not even hearing the prayers of these two thirds, man. All right, their prayer is an abomination, man. Okay, but when we read, you know, James five and sixteen in the latter, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's dealing with you, hopeful elect men, right, and you few sincere sisters. Okay, now I want to touch on that word availeth here, okay, and we're gonna go to the blue letter. Strong's G 2480 is who? Is who? Right, is who? Right, and dealing with your prayer, your effectual, fervent prayer. So, of a righteous man availeth to go into much. It says to be strong. Right, definition two. Here's the point to have power. Okay, so you see. Our prayer, all right, with prayer, 
comes power, man. There's power in our prayer, man. Okay? And I want to show you an account within the scriptures on how that is so, man. Okay? And here in the times to come, you know, we must be praying one for another. All right? You know that, you know, uh, this power, you know, is manifest. Okay? You know, when we, when we beg to Yahweh Shem Shai, all right, or we ask earnestly to Yahweh Shem Shai, all right, to give us protection, all right, to, to, to keep us from the wicked Esau Edom, all right, and his wicked devices, his wicked plans, okay? You know, that will come to fruition, man, okay? And that, that also, you know, is tied to faith, man, okay? You know, you're not praying, all right, making your request to Yahweh Shemal Shai without faith, okay? So, this is Acts 12 and 1. It says, Now about the time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. All right, and I was curious on what Herod, you know, this was. All right, and this is Herod uh, Agrippa, all right, the first. Okay, it says here in this article, I might uh post a link, all right, in the description box of this lesson. Um, but you know, there's there's like uh five to six herods, okay, and that's why the apostles and elders tell us to do our research, man. Okay, but the herod, you know, that vex certain of the church, as we're reading in Acts the twelfth chapter, you know, is dealing with uh Herod Agrippa, okay. And just reading this uh this paragraph it says Herod Agrippa appears in Acts of the Apostles, where he killed James, the brother of John, and arrested Peter, who was led out of prison by an angel. All right, and we're about to read that, man. Okay. You know that miracle, right? Which is spoke about, right? It, it came with something, man. Okay. It had to it had to uh to, to be followed. Or manifest behind something. Okay. It says Acts 12 and 1. It says now about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hands. To vex certain of the church. Yeah. So he started vexing the believers man. Alright the believers in Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Okay. It says and he killed James the brother of John. With the sword. So you see you know James he was a martyr man. Okay. Which some brothers, all right, you know, some of you believers, you know, will be, okay, martyrs for Yahweh Shemiah Shai, all right, but it's okay, man. Okay, your works do follow you, according to Revelation 14, all right, and 13, all right, and according to Hebrews 6 and 10, you know, the Most High Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget, you know, your work and labor of love, man, okay. So, you know, if you have to be a martyr, hey, be so, man, okay, and and take joy in it because, you know, the Lord, he will recompense you, man. okay, but uh, this is Psalms 116 and 15, it says, precious in the sight of the Lord, the Haobah Shemal Shai is the death of his saints, all right, and we're reading about one of his saints, man. Precious in the sight of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is the death of his saints. Okay? So reading on Acts 12 and 3, it says, And because he saw it pleased the Jews, yeah, those wicked Israelites back then, you know, who took pleasure, you know, in, you know, the believers of Yahweh Shai, you know, being persecuted or being put to death. Right? Same here today, man. You got wicked two third Israelites that will take pleasure in the believers. Know, being persecuted here today, man, right, and even put to death. It says he he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, right? Acts twelve and four. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Right, and this Easter is not dealing with you no know, no pagan holiday, 
you know, with no Easter bunnies and some Easter eggs. I wish, you know, uh, rabbits, bunny rabbits, right? They don't lay no damn eggs. Okay, they mammals, right? They have <laughs> babies, man. Okay, but this is dealing with the Passover, man. Okay, so Acts twelve and five it says Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing unto the church unto the Most High Yahweh for him. All right, you see that? Let me read that again. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto the Most High Yahweh for him. Okay, and there's power in prayer, man. Right, we just read that. Okay, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Okay, and we're about to see, you know, what the prayers of the church is going to do. All right, for the apostle Peter, man. Okay, and of course, the apostle Peter, you know, has to pray himself. Okay, and of course, the apostle Peter had to what? Have faith in Yahabai Shimia was shy, man. Okay. Let me read that one more time. Acts 12 and 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto the Most High Yahweh for him. And the scriptures tell us to do that today, man. Right? It tells us to pray without ceasing, man. Okay? Going to read that real quick. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. It says, Pray without ceasing. All right, let me go to the, the first verse, uh, the verse before. It says, rejoice evermore. Yeah, because we have this truth, this knowledge, all right, this wisdom, all right? We have the gospel, man, the good news, all right? For you Israelites, start with you hopeful elect, man, okay? It says, pray without ceasing. The scriptures tell us that for a reason, man. Okay, we're in some some deadly serious times, all right, and we're gonna have to be praying, you know, for protection, right? That Yahweh Shemal Shah will protect us. All right, we're gonna have to be praying for our brothers and our sisters, man. All right, just as we're reading right here, man, they pray without ceasing. All right, unto the Most High Yahweh for, you know, the Apostle Peter, man. All right, Acts twelve and six, it says, and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison All right and we're about to read what that prayer you know, is about to do for the apostle Peter man you know, the prayers you know, of the church man okay it says Acts 12 and 7 it says and behold the angel of the Lord Yahweh Shemal Shai came upon him and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Okay, so you see, you know, that see where the prayer, you know, of the church, all right, of the believers of Yahweh Shemal Shai, you know, did for the apostle Peter. All right, similar in, in today's time, man. All right, you know, we, we understand. You know, Revelation 2 and 10, the devil, you know, being Esau, Edom, you know, the false accuser, you know, the slanderer, all right, the so-called white man, you know, starting with the wicked elite, you know, they're going to cast some of us into prison, okay, where we're going to be tried 10 days, a complete number of days, man, all right, but be thou faithful unto death, and the Lord shall give us a crown of life, man, all right, but nonetheless, you know, us being cast into the prison, Cast into prison, you know, these FEMA camps that Esau Edom, you know, has laid up in store. All right. You know, prayer is going to have to be made, man. Okay. We're going to have to be praying for our brothers. All right. We're going to have to be praying for our sisters during this time, man. All right. And best believe many miracles is going to be done. All right. Off those prayers of the church, the believers, man. Here in this time now, man. Okay. Just as we're reading. You know, the, the prayer, you know, the prayers of the church, you know, for the Apostle Peter. And we're reading the miracle behind that, man. All right, the power behind that prayer, man. Okay. 
Acts 12 and 8, it says, The angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. So he did, and he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, follow me. It says, And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Yeah, you know, Peter, you know, probably still halfway asleep, man. Okay, thinking that this is a vision, man. All right, but this is a literal, a literal miracle being done, you know, by Yahabah Shemiah Shai, sending forth his angel, you know, to get him out of prison, man. All right, and that was all based off of what? The prayers of the church, man. All right, the believers of Yahabah Shemiah Shai. All right, there's power in your prayer, man. Okay, Acts 12 and 10, it says, And when they were past the first and the second war, they came unto the iron gate that led unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Verse 11 says, And when Peter was come to himself, he was coming to his senses, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord Yahweh Shemiah Shai have sent his angel, and he have delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and that's Herod Agrippa, all right, the first, and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews, those wicked Israelites, man, all right, who wanted him to be persecuted and put to death, all right, just as, you know, uh, you know, the Apostle James, man, okay? So you see, there is power in our prayer, man. All right, we're going to have to selflessly pray for our brothers and our sisters during this time. All right, there's nothing wrong with making prayer for yourself, you know, begging your how about Shema Shai, you know, to have mercy upon yourself and your house, man. All right, but we're going to have to pray more and more for our brothers and sisters, right, in this time to come, man. All right, so I pray and hope, you know, that that was clear and concise, all right, dealing with, you know, prayer, there's this power in your prayer. So I, I want to read this real quick. Our Lord Yahweh Shai taught us you know, and showed us how to pray. All right, this is Matthew 6 and 5. It says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as an hypocrite as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, and they that they may be seen of men. All right, and that's what you know these these heathen do. Okay. So they, they want all the praises of men, you know, they, they like to pray in front of people. All right, but it says verily, which means truly, I say unto you, they have their reward. And this is how we must pray, man. All right, verse six, it says, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. Yeah, because this is, you know, an intimate relationship you know, between us and our power, man. All right, nobody can have that intimate relationship, you know, with Yahweh Shema Shai. But you, man, okay, you know, uh, another brother can't have that intimate relationship, you know, with Yahweh Shemiah Shai for you, man. Okay, you got to do this yourself, man. All right, you got to be praying to Yahweh Shemiah Shai yourself, right, in secret, you know, as we're being told, okay. But, you know, sometimes, you know, we're in captivity, man. You know, you just pray, you know, hey, on your goings, man, okay. You know, when you're in your car, all right, before you walk into work, when you're at work, all right, everywhere, man. Pray without ceasing, man. Okay? Pray without ceasing. Okay? It says, And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Okay? So you see, you know, there's many rewards you know, coming toward, you know, you hopeful elect out there. You know, who's praying to Yahweh Shemal Shai in secret. All right? And in general, man. Okay? Matthew 6 and 7, it says, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, but they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Yeah, you know, we got to be direct by right, what we, you know, uh, ask of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, right? But here's, uh, here's a point, man. All right, here's the point. Matthew 6 and 8, it says, Be not ye therefore like unto them, like the heathen, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him, okay? So for one, you know, there's power in our prayer, all right? The Lord, the Habai Shemal Shai, he knows what we need, all right? And in the times to come, we're going to be praying for ourselves, of course, 
right? But in the times to come, we need to selflessly pray for our brothers, all right, and our sisters, man. All right, so I pray and hope that this is edifying to the spirit. You know, there's power, right, in your prayer, man. All right, with that, fellow one.